Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the seven game NBA preseason slate on Monday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL sites on DraftKings. If you guys are interested in the Monday Night Football show on site, Colts and Ravens, I just uploaded a video breaking that down. Also, I will be live tomorrow. Um, if you're unable to watch these YouTube videos, I also upload an Apple podcast link down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. And if you're interested in signing up for premium content, I'll find on Patreon.com. A few different packages. Again, more info down below. And I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. So for NBA, there's two different ways you can play for Prize Picks. Right now, they don't have the preseason board up. I would expect that to be up early tomorrow. They have the futures board up. So like, if you want for the season, like you can take over or under on players and the and points average. Like Bradley Beal, do you think he scores more or less than 31.6 points per game? Uh, but that's basically the idea. So like you can take over on fancy points or straight up like points, rebounds, assists, three pointers made. If you guys want to try it out, sign up use my code DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word. Uh, you will get a hundred percent match up to a hundred dollars. So you deposit, you use my code, hundred dollars, you get a free hundred dollars to play with. And finally, I want to thank you guys again for your continued support. If you could hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload videos and go live. Okay, so. Um, before we get into players and the prices for seven game slate, let's look back lineup here from Sunday. So Sunday I played super super light, just missing GPPs. So took a couple of risks here. Um, so with Rubio, uh, Suggs, Giddy, Mobley, uh, Yaka, Pearl, Crusoe, Giannis, and Vuce. My two risks here really were, were Suggs and Giannis. Didn't work out Suggs. Um, just that magic. I was talking about this in the Discord. I don't think they win ten games this year. They were one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Um, and then Giannis only played the first half. Come, Hmm. I tell you guys, you guys know I got love. I love Coach Mike Bootenholzer. Coach Mike Bootenholzer, he's the best. There is a minute's consideration, but he would not speak to that. No. It is the preseason. Who cares? Just tell us how much they're going to play. Like, my God. So, yeah, I rolled the dice on Giannis, hoping he'd play the second half. If he did, he would have smashed. He had 30 fa- He literally, like, had 30 fancy points in, like, one quarter and didn't do much in the second quarter and then obviously only played the first half. Um, it was a risk I was willing to take because if he plays that second half, he probably goes for third quarter at least. He probably goes for, like, 45 fancy points. So, it's like, just... Don't get me started on Budenholzer. But, um, yeah, Rubio got a little bit unlucky here. He only played like a quarter and a half. He was absolutely smashing. Um, Giddy was solid. Again, Mobley was good value. He was a guy I felt very safe about. Power forward was pretty weak. Pertle was fine. I didn't play as much as I thought. Uh, Caruso was solid. And the Bulls were just a team. The preseason goats, I guess. Who's switch was decent as well. But, um, yeah, I wanted to show and say that. Uh, made some money there. And then had a good day um, in season, or in um, main slate and show and say for NFL. Even with injuries, I had Daniel Jones in my NFL main slate, still easily cashing GPPs. If he doesn't get injured, it's probably a 10, 20x day easily for myself. Um, so, yeah, a little bit tilting, but still had a great day for NFL. But, yeah, that's it for the look back for NBA, guys. So um, let's talk about this seven-game slate. Let's go team by team. Let's start off with the Houston Rockets. So last game, Houston Rockets, um, we got basically similar to the, the game before. So Wood played 26 minutes, uh, Green 28, Kevin Porter Jr. 27 House and Tice were in the starting lineup, played low 20s. Uh, a couple guys on the bench pushed for 20. Sengen played 18. KJ Martin played 18. Dante Exum played 18. So taking a look at players and the prices, Christian Wood, 7.6. I think it's pretty safe. Mid-20s minutes, first couple games. Solid point per minute guy. Good rebounder. Good score. Like the matchup against Preston Chua. I, I think Wood's very safe. Now, KP, KPJ was the chalk of the chalk last late. And um, didn't play that well. Only had 12 and 4, was a little bit of a letdown. We saw the type of upset he does possess, so in the first game. So, uh, perfectly fine going right back to well with KPJ. I do think that ownership drops. And then Jalen Green, right? He's playing massive minutes. Right now, his price is just too cheap. He's going to play close to 30 minutes, getting a ton of shot attempts up. A little reliant in the scoring, but at this price point, it, there's not a ton of risk. So, main three guys all look pretty solid here for Houston. 
Below that, so Christopher's been playing really well, but he hasn't been in the main rotation. He's only been coming in for garbage time, which I think is really weird. Uh, Sengen, I do like him, and he played for almost 20 minutes. A really solid point per minute guy. Um, so I do like Sengen here for value. Um, Tice is just fine at 4 8. I'm going to probably play about 20 minutes. That's probably it. Yeah, X him off the bench, maybe a little bit of interest. Um, but let's talk about Toronto. So Toronto's team has been giving their starters good run in the preseason. Uh, 30 last game for Scotty Barnes, 29 for Ochi, 29 for Precious, and 29 for Fred Van Fleet. So uh, Fred Van Fleet at 8.2K, yes, the price is up, but if he's going to play close to 30 minutes in this type of matchup, I like him a lot. I think he's very, very safe. Same with both wings and Scotty Barnes and OG Anunoby. Scotty Barnes, uh, you know, has been playing some backup point guard, great at stuff on the stat sheet. OG, a little more reliant on the scoring, but great, uh, you know, with the blocks and steals. So both wings firmly in play. And then, yeah, Chua is a guy I played the first two preseason games was solid. Uh, actually didn't have him in my lineup last game. Of course, that's the game he goes for the ceiling game. Um, but if he's going to play close to 30 minutes at only 6-5, firmly in play too. So really the main four guys for Toronto I like. Now, um, interesting thing is Ken Birch is off the COVID protocol. So does he play in this game? If he does, then I'm not as excited about pressure to Chua. So we'll just keep an eye on that one. Uh, Drochka 4-8. Again, how many minutes? He didn't play as many minutes. Or the Raptors. Yeah, he only played 14. So um, probably not going to go there. I'm moving on to Charlotte and Miami. So last game for Charlotte, you get starters play, low to mid-20s minutes. Um, there are some injuries to go over. So Rogier's out, Hayward is out, uh, Plumley is out, and I believe Oubre is close to returning. We'll see. He's questionable. So, um, yeah, with a lot of guys out, you have Lamelo at only 6.5K. If we're going to get mid-20s minutes for, you know, Lamelo uh, with a lot of the main guys out, I think he makes a really solid point-per-dollar play. P.J. Washington, again, was like 0 of 10 from 3. Uh, that last game, but he did start at the five. Uh, again, Plumley is out, so we'll see if he starts at the five again. If he does, definitely viable. And same with Bridges, who uh, got a decent amount of running. And both those kind of wings uh, got good run. 27 minutes for Bridges. You had 24 for PJ Washington. Uh, Boke Knight played some decent minutes off the bench. 26. He's a little bit reliant on the scoring, though, so I'm not as excited there. Um, and then, yeah, value McDaniels is viable. I don't love it. Maybe one of these, like, um, maybe they move one of these other centers in the starting lineup instead of PJ at the five. We'll see. So, yeah, monitor the starting lineup there for Charlotte. Moving on to Miami. So, last game, uh, it was a back to back. So, they just gave all the young guys, uh, you know, run. It was a super tight rotation. Um, you know, the veterans haven't played in the second half yet. So, uh, right now, they're risky targets, guys like Jimmy, Bam, and Abayo, unless we hear otherwise. Hero's been the guy who's been getting the most run for Miami. And I think he's he's viable if we don't hear uh, news. So I would assume he plays the second half no matter what. Um, I got like here at seven. Price is up, um, and now you have two centers in front of him. So even though I do love uh, you're at seven, probably not going to go there. Um, yeah, some of these guys got the price bump from when they had like an eight man rotation last game. But yeah, if we know like the veterans are going to play in the second half, and like I like Kyle Lowry looks really solid, and he had like thirty fancy points for me in one half last uh, slate or two games ago for them. All right, moving on to Detroit. So we've only seen one uh, Piston preseason game so far. And minutes were low 20s for these guys. Bay played 24, Jim Grant 24, Stewart 20, Saban Lee 23, Magruder played 23, Josh Jackson and Kojo played 25 minutes each off the bench. So Jim Grant at the top feels too pricey for me at 8K. Uh, Isaiah Stewart at 6'6". Six, six. Mm, viable, I don't love it. Kate Cunningham still out, looks like. Uh, Kelly Linick off the bench in play, but probably only plays about 20 minutes. Again, he'll be productive when he's out there. I think Sadiq Bay is pretty safe. I think he gets mid-20s minutes. Uh, he's definitely going to be one of the better uh, players for the Detroit this year. And then, yeah, keep an eye on Kellen Hayes' news. Uh, he is probable. If he is, if he does, in fact, play, then this, it takes those other guards out of play. And if Killian plays, we probably get mid-20s minutes, which would make him in play in the mid-range. And then probably not going to get to anyone else on Detroit. So moving on to Memphis, last game they rested a lot of the guys, so um, it was a lot of the younger guys, even though they still spread out the minutes, which was a little bit frustrating. But um, yeah, so Ja, Stephen Adams, both in. I think Ja is a very safe spend up. He's been playing mid-20s minutes the first couple games that he has played. Again, without Jonas Valanciunas, his usage goes way up. So I do like Ja, got him out there at the top. Adams had a really big game, thinking about for like 15 and 15. He's got a high floor. Um, he's going to play mid-20s Mets. I think he's a pretty safe option. So the top two guys there for Memphis look good. Triple J, a little bit more boomer bust, foul trouble concerns. Uh, but the upside is there. Obviously, a guy that can block some shots. 
Some of these other guys, like Clark Bain, got a price increase, Tillman, from the last game, so I'm not really looking to them. And, yeah, probably it for me for Memphis. All right, Brooklyn and Philadelphia. So, Nets last game. Uh, we got news from one of the beat writers that he thought, like, the main guy was only going to play 10 to 15 minutes. And Harden and KD actually play, like, mid-20s, uh, 23 for KD, 24 for Harden. Don't think Kyrie Irving's going to play in this game. Um, so, if we're going to get mid-20s, Mets from KD and Harden, I do think they're both solid spent ups. Probably a small lead to KD over Harden. I think he's a little bit of a higher floor. But both Brooklyn stars would be in play here. Value for uh, Brooklyn, not a ton I love. Uh, keep an eye on Millsap status. He could play in Monday's preseason game. If not, then Aldridge probably gets some decent run. He played, I think it was almost 20 minutes or around 20 minutes. 20 minutes off the bench. He'll be productive when he's out there. So if there's no Millsap, I think Aldridge is solid value. And then younger guys, probably not get to anyone unless we get news that uh, the main guys are resting. Moving on to Philly. So Philly's going to be a little bit shorthanded. Let's see what the minutes were like last game. So um, we did see Joel, Joel Embiid surprisingly play in the second half. He played 20. Uh, Tobias Harris played 24. Milton played 25 minutes. Uh, but we have Harris out. Obviously, Ben Simmons out. Seth Curry out. And Shake Milton out. So at the top, Joel Embiid, 8.8K. Um, he played in the second half last game. So I'm assuming he does this game. And with all these guys out in a pretty solid match against Brooklyn, I think Embiid's a, a, a good spend up. Now, the concern is, in coming out the meniscus tear, how many minutes does he play? But he played in the second half last game. So I'm assuming he does again. Drummond at 5-5, five, five, um, viable contrarian play, but probably would only feel comfortable about him if Embiid does sit out this game. And you have Maxi, so no Milton, no Ben Simmons. I would assume Maxi starts at the point guard position. He played a lot better off the bench. Um, but yeah, at this price point, I like him. He's aggressive on the offensive end. Value for Philadelphia, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup. Like Danny Green did a good game last game. He's super reliant on the scoring. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see who they end up starting. Like does does Niang move in the starting lineup here without Tobias? Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Just Cork Miles move in the starting lineup. So Philadelphia a little bit thin. Again, I want to keep. I want to see who they end up starting. Moving on to the Pelicans and the Jazz. So last game for the Pelicans. Starters played, you know, a couple starters played mid-20s minutes in JV and NAW. Uh, and then Trey Murphy played 31 um, minutes off the bench. He's been getting the most run here for the Pelicans. So Zion, Ingram, Hayes all still out. JV at 7.8K. Uh, you know, price has come up on him, but he's going to play mid-20s minutes. I don't hate it. I don't love the match against Gobert, but a high usage guy, good rebounder. Um, still has some interest there. Again, Murphy, the price is up, but he's played like 30 minutes in each of the first three games. So I think he's still a relatively safe option. Uh, and then NAW had a really bad shooting game last game. He shot, I don't know, like 3 of 15. Uh, but he's going to be, you know, one of the high usage guys in his offense. Um, so still has some interest there in NAW. Cheaper options for the Pelicans. Not a ton else I love here. Let's see. How many minutes did Hernan Gomez play backing up? Um, yeah, he only played 13 minutes. Eh, yeah, not much else here for uh, the Pelicans. Let's move on to the Jazz. Uh, Jazz rested all their main guys last game. They'll put a lot of the younger guys. Um, we don't know anything on minutes yet here for, um, for the main guys, but I assume they play... So as it stands right now, not much interest unless we get confirmation that they are going to play into the second half. So the Jazz, as it stands, are probably a stay away unless we get news that for sure like the starters are going to play into the second half. All right, let's move on to Sacramento and Portland. So Sacramento starters last game. A couple guys played mid-20s. Mets, Fox 22, uh, Halliburton 28, Barnes played 24. So you have Fox at 8.1K. Again, um, Kings have been running their starters a decent minute so far in the preseason. Uh, I think, you know, Luke Walton likes likes running at the starters more. So, uh, yeah, Fox, I think, is a relatively safe spend-up. Decent matchup here against Portland, too. As far as the bigs, they've been messing the rotation with, like, Holmes, Tristan Thompson, Len, Bagley. Um, so I want to see what they do with the starting lineup. Whoever starts is probably the safer option. Halliburton at 6'4". He played the most minutes, I believe, last game. Yeah, he played 28, went for 4, 5, and 5. Not a great game, but a guy that probably gets the most amount of minutes on this team. And then, yeah, the bigs, again, I want to see what they end up doing with the starting lineup, so it'll be wait-and-see mode there. All right, moving on to Portland. So last game, you had uh, Lillard and CJ only played the first half. Nurkic played in the second half when it was really solid. Um, and then we do know news that uh, Dame and CJ are both out. So I'm curious to see what they start. Also, Paul out, Macklemore out, Cody Zell out. So they're thin. Tony Snell is on this roster. Um, Nurkic is 6'9". Here's the tricky part, right? Does he play into the second half? If I knew Nurkic was going to play in the second half, he'd be one of the best plays in the slate without the top two guards. But does he? I don't know. He did last game, but ugh, 
right? We'll see. Now, Simons, the price would come up, but he should start and probably play good minutes. So still some interest there in Simons. And then, like, I don't know who else they're going to start. Like, does Dennis Smith Jr. move in the starting lineup? I don't know. Like, they don't have a ton of guards. They have Quinn Cook. I want to, again, another one where it's like, I'm curious to see who they start. My guess is probably Simons at the point, Nurkic at the five, Covington at the three, Nance at the four. Like, who starts at the two? Maybe they start DSJ at the one and Simons at the two. And then it's still CJ Ellaby, too. Let's see. What were the minutes behind? So, when he's here little, he played 24. Okay, Simons played 20. And LB played 14. Yeah, so, hmm. I don't know. Definitely, there, there could be some value here uh, with some of these cheaper guys, depending on what they do with the starting lineup here for Portland. And finally, Minnesota and the Clippers. So, Timberwolves starters have not been getting the best uh, or most amount of run. Oop, I don't even have it up. Um, let's see. Okay, so this last game went to overtime. Bass starters, low 20s minutes. Um, here, let's go to Minnesota. So, yeah, D'Lo, Cat, Edwards, um, you know, if if we do get news that they're going to play more, probably my preferred option would be Carl Anthony Towns. I think he has the highest floor. Um, D'Lo feels a little bit too pricey for me. Edwards is fine. Didn't have the best shooting game last game, but we know he's a guy that is not afraid to shoot the ball. Value for the Minnesota, not much really here for me. So really just the main guys. And finally, the Clippers. So Clippers last game, still spread out the minutes. A couple guys on the bench played low 20s, but... Clippers have not been an exciting team to target in the preseason. Obviously, Kawhi Paul, uh, and um, Ibaka are out. Now, keep an eye on Zubach. This is pretty big. If Zubach can't go, then we have Giles and Hartenstein. They're going to split the sentiments, and both are really productive, good point for guys. So what have been in both those guys' value? Paul George really hasn't been getting big minutes, so unless we hear otherwise, it's going to be hard for me to go there with confidence. Um, you know, a couple guys I think you look to maybe about the bench, like Terrence Mann. He plays low to mid-20s Mets. He's a pretty productive player. But, like, yeah, uh, Clippers have really been spreading out in the preseason. So you're not going to feel great unless we hear confirmation of, you know, starters and their minutes. So, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the video today. If you have been enjoying the content, would really appreciate if you'd hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos and go live. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.